Welcome to Adventure Week on GMBN, where we've got loads of videos coming your way this week uh, to hopefully inspire you to get out there, try something new, maybe go for a big ride, go bike packing, uh, hopefully something that you've never tried before on a mountain bike. And let's start with trying to pick the best bike for going on an adventure. I'll start as I'm here. Uh, for me, I think the cross country bike is the best bike because they're super lightweight. You look at how capable they are these days. Look at those World Cup cross country tracks that they're racing on. And down to us mere mortals, those bikes are just super capable, especially if they're fitted with things like chunkier tires, dropper posts. You can start riding some super technical stuff on a cross country bike. So I love how capable they are. They're super lightweight. Yes, you're gonna mount a load of stuff to them, especially if we're going bike packing. You're gonna be putting tents on the front, bikes on the back, cider on the back, just like Blake just did on my cross country bike. But still, they're never gonna weigh as much as something like a fat bike or something like that when they're then loaded up. So for me, a cross country bike is a winner. Even loaded up, they still are really capable. And I like being able to go quite a long way. If I'm going for a big bike packing trip, I don't want it to be crazy heavy. I like to be able to still ride uh, you know, quite a long way and ride some technical stuff. Plus, you might even get the bonus to be able to dump your bags, dump your tent, and take that bike out for a spin on the trails as well. If you're going on an adventure, you're probably likely to be carrying more stuff with you, so tools and spares. Even if you're not going bike packing, you might not be taking sleeping bags and tents. If you're going on a super big ride, maybe from point to point, you're gonna to need to be taking some extra bits to get you out of situations you might get stuck in. So things like spare tubes, punch repair kits, chain tools, uh, because you, you probably, you know, maybe more likely to need them, especially on a cross country bike. If you're riding a super lightweight bike, you might still have some super lightweight tires in there. And if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you need to be uh, able to fix them. So definitely take yourself a big backpack or maybe even think about getting a bag that goes on your bike so you can take some extra bits just in case you get in some trouble out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we've definitely done videos as well on how to stay safe when you're out on epic rides. So things like using your phone, uh, obviously, you know, in, in emergency situations, that's great, but also apps like Kamut, Strava, Garmin has that incident that de detection, should I say, or even that app, What Three Words, which gives you a location worldwide using three unique words. Definitely worth being a bit more prepared for those epic rides. <laughs> Hell no, Neil, this is the ultimate bike packing bike, the fat bike. Why? Well, my argument is this is the most all-terrain mountain bike you can buy off the shelf. Why? Because you've got these fat tires. These are four-inch tires. They can cover snow, sand, mud. They trumble along through the woodlands. You've got an amount of grip that is insane. You can strap so many bags to this thing and carry it and go on an epic adventure. Hell, I've been all over whales in this thing with you Neil and I kept up with you even though you were on a cross-country bike this thing's not built for speed this thing's built for going anywhere and everywhere that's why I like the fat bike uh, it's not going to be the fastest bicycle out there that's for sure but it's not a racer when it comes to mountain biking adventures it's all about trumbling along enjoying the scenery that you're riding through experiencing wildlife and um, it sounds amazing when you're going down the fire trails. It's amazing. I like it. And there's something humbling about running a fat bike. It's different. It's unique. So you would think the fat bike's going to be super heavy and clumbersome, but it all depends on the bike that you go for. My Canyon Dude CF, this is full carbon rig, uh, is pretty lightweight. But when you start strapping bike uh, packing equipment to it, that's when it does start to get heavy. So weight isn't really an issue when you're starting to bolt bags to it because you get different fat bikes that weigh quite a bit but again it's not all about speed it's all about the adventure and what you can get out of it that's why the fat bike's the best recently uh, myself and a friend did a trip from north wales to south wales uh, several hundred miles long and also several tens of thousands of feet and climbing and descending over four days. Now we took two bikes on the trip, a 160 mil travel bike uh, and a 180 mil travel bike. They were both aluminium frames, uh, both 27.5 and also with um, soft compound tires because 
The, the good thing about soft compound tyres, if you're doing multiple days then and long days as well, especially on an e-bike, you're getting quite fatigued during the end of the day. And so it's good to have that control to, uh, to prevent you sort of uh, having a bit of an off when you're, when you're making mistakes. Now, what was quite interesting of the two bikes, the, the 160 bike is inherently a bit more lively because it's more of a sort of trail enduro style bike rather than a enduro gravity style bike. So the suspension is, um, it's maybe a little bit more progressive, like I said, a little bit more lively. So during the day, you've got a completely different um, bike for different occasions. So when you've got the tight single track riding, the 160 bike is great. Whereas when you've got the big rocks, the big collisions and long descents, then the 180 bike, it probably comes into its own. Now, um, probably the main thing we noticed during the week was that uh, because you're getting quite tired, a lot of bum ache because you sat in the saddle for multiple hours, is that it was actually the longer travel bike which offered the more comfort. And that's because possibly it had a more linear style suspension compared to the 160 bike, but also it had slightly uh, better suspension. So a softer ride all round was actually quite a comforting thing on a big adventure trip. Hmm. What do I think is the best bike for adventuring? Well, personally for me, I think it's got to be the trail bike. Something with a little bit more travel than a cross country bike. Bit quicker than a fat bike, dare I say, rolling around, but just super capable of doing everything. Like Neil said, XC bikes these days are very capable, but I like to get a bit rowdier. So something with a bit more travel, like my Canyon Neuron that I did the summer solstice ride on, I think is perfect for it. It's 130 mil front and rear. Stick on some slightly quicker rolling, lighter tires and you can go all day on the thing. It's solid, it's lightweight, you can fit your bags and your racks to it and you can still have fun on it. You're not gonna have your eyeballs shaken out of their socket. So yeah, for me, the trail bike has got to be the ultimate adventure bike. Well, I think that just goes to show that there's a bike for any adventure and you can always make your bike work no matter what it is. Let us know the adventures you're getting up to and what bike that you would choose as the ultimate dream adventure bike. Keep following us on YouTube and of course over on social media on Instagram to see what we've been up to.